So in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about uh, three different graphical user interface toolkits that you can use in Python. The first one I want to talk about is Kiwi. Uh, then we'll look at GTK, and then we'll also look at TK Enter. Hi, my name is Jobin, and I'm an open source developer. My channel is called Jobin Pi, and it's all about Python and Linux. Welcome to Jobin Pi. So if you're just starting off with Python, I think you might be a little bit surprised to see all the various GUI toolkits that you can use to, to create your user interfaces. Um, it's not just one, it's not just two, there's uh, quite a few. I, I haven't tried all of them. So today I'll look at Kiwi, um, GTK, and TK Enter. So Kiwi is actually a very interesting graphical user interface toolkit. And the reason is it, it says that you'll be able to deploy apps on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, and Android and all with a single code base. So essentially you would create your application and then deploy it in all those different platforms. Before I get into all this, I just wanna explain that um, what you hear is basically just my opinion. Um, I, I've tried Kiwi and I've also tried GTK and, and also TK Enter. So my explanations will be based on my past experiences. Um, and, and you might get you know, different mileage compared to, to what I experienced. When I first started using Kiwi, uh, I thought the idea was actually excellent, you know, to be able to, to make a desktop program and then have that same program work on a phone. Uh, that, that sounded almost too good to be true. And I seriously, seriously considered Kiwi for all my Python applications. I, I went as far as like buying a book and then you know, reading it to, to make sure I'm, I'm understanding the toolkit correctly. Kiwi itself has its own language, like design language. Uh, it's called KV Lang, I believe it is. It's been a while since I looked at it, since I looked at Kiwi. Yeah, KV design language, that's what it's called. And it basically looks, you know, something like this. The, the layout is, is similar to this. So the code that you see on the left-hand side it creates the window that's on the right hand side. And there's a explanation on, on how to use it. So you can either create your user interfaces using their own design language, which is called KV design language, or you can create it using Python code. So you have a couple of choices. And I really got into KV a few years ago but one thing I noticed is it, it felt like it was incomplete. I remember adding a widget, which was similar to like a, a tree view widget, or, or maybe it was some kind of list box. And the, the highlight portion of the code, like when, when I clicked on an item, like a, when I clicked on a row, it wouldn't actually highlight to show that it was clicked or to show that it was selected. So I had to actually add some code to make that highlighted part appear. Uh, and it was, for me, it was a, a, a bit of involved code just to make it highlight. So it, it just had little things like that. And the, the more I started reading about it, I, on, on different forums, I, I got some mixed results from, from different opinions from people. So for, for me, when I really started to understand how Kiwi works, it just wasn't the right toolkit for me. It might have changed. Um, I, the last time I used this was maybe two or three years ago, so it might be better now. Nevertheless, it's it's something worth checking out um, if you're interested in creating applications for phones and desktop. Uh, then you know definitely check out Kiwi. But one thing I would do though, if you do decide to use Kiwi, is create a simple application, you know, just like a hello world application, and then try to deploy it on your target platform. So if you're, if you're creating an application to eventually 
install it on on a phone try to deploy your application on the phone and see if it works and and see how straightforward the whole process is um, it's it's easier to do that in the beginning than to create a full application and then find out that the whole process either doesn't work the way that you expect or it's much more difficult uh, than you had an anticipated so that would be my advice would be just to um, create a simple application deploy it see if you like it see if it works and then if it does then uh, look into learning this uh, toolkit even more uh, at the time of this video it says they're at version 2.1.0 so uh, yeah Kiwi is an interesting toolkit and their website is kiwi.org the next toolkit I'm gonna talk about is GTK uh, GTK is actually a very advanced toolkit it's made for desktop applications and it works with various languages like we have some starter code here for C, JavaScript, Perl, Python, Rust, Vela and you know the Python code looks like this and GTK is a very very advanced toolkit you can create some high-end applications with this I believe Inkscape is one application that, that's been created with GTK. Um, there's countless other applications created with GTK. Uh, so it's a very, very advanced uh, toolkit for sure. Um, I created my first GUI Python application in GTK. This is actually the toolkit that I started with was, was GTK. And my program was successfully deployed in Linux. Um, but it was much harder to, to get it to work in Windows. It eventually worked, um, but the process was so difficult that uh, if, I, if I tried to do it again today, I would have to relearn the whole process from scratch. There were a lot of steps from what I remember to, to make it work on Windows. Um, but it is a, a cross-platform GUI toolkit, but its home is actually in Linux. The easiest place to deploy a GTK application in my experience uh, is Linux and if you try to get this to work with with Windows um, it's usually not as straightforward as far as a GUI designer is concerned it it doesn't officially have a um, a designer widgets would have to be created in code like using code like this you know you would import GI and then start with that and app equal gtk dot application you know like that and then app dot run so that would start like the main loop there are a couple of graphical user interface designers that you can use with uh, gtk um, one of them is glade so this is a a gui creator and i've i, I actually use this for my own application um, in, in gtk the problem with with glade is that it's no longer in development so you can see here the news as of august 10th 2022 it says glade is not being actively developed or maintained anymore and we're just going to maximize this or zoom it in so you can see it better so this is um, essentially the last release and there's a, a replacement application for this and that um, replacement application is called Cambalachi. So this is the evolution of, of Glade. And Cambalachi works with GTK 4 and 3. Um, Glade, I believe, was just version 3 that it was compatible with. So, yeah, this one is actively being developed as of the time of this video. Uh, we can see here uh, on GitLab, it, it was uh, the last update was two weeks ago. So you could use uh, a user interface designer called Cambalachi to create GTK applications. My suggestion would be to learn how to create the widgets using Python code first. And then once you're comfortable with that, maybe then consider a graphical user interface designer. Um, because I find sometimes designers and what the graphical user interface toolkit is capable of don't match 
Um, so sometimes the toolkit itself is capable of more than what the designer can provide. So by using a designer and limiting yourself to a designer, um, you might actually be limiting the capabilities of, of your application and, and some of the widgets that you have that you may not have access to with the designer. So, but it's definitely worth checking out. If you wanted to check this designer out, it's on GitLab. So gitlab.gnome.org slash JPU slash Cambalachi. The application that I created uh, with GTK and Glade, uh, this was actually back in 2019, is Open Resizer. So it's, it's actually this application here. And the interface looks like this. So this is what a GTK application looks like. So if you're interested in creating an advanced application, um, and by advanced, I mean something high-end, like a, a Photoshop-type application, um, GTK is, is a very, very capable toolkit. The last toolkit I'm going to talk about is TK Enter. This is a screenshot of PyGubu Designer, which is used for designing TK Enter applications. This is essentially what a TK Enter application looks like. It has a lot of the primary widgets that you would need to, to create an application. It doesn't have as many widgets as some of the other toolkits, um, but it's a very, very capable toolkit. It comes standard with Python, so that's actually a big plus when it comes to um, distributing your, your application. And this is actually the, the primary toolkit that I use uh, for my Python GUI applications. So I've used Kiwi, I've used GTK, and I currently use TK Enter. And out of all three, and it's just my personal opinion for my own projects, I prefer to use TK Enter because of its simplicity um, and also because it's included with Python. And that to me is, is important because I want it to be as easy as possible uh, to deploy on Linux, Windows, and, and Mac OS. And there really isn't a right answer or, or a wrong answer for that matter. It just really depends on which toolkit you like. For me, I, I found TK Enter to, to be the best for, for the applications that I want to create. Um, but the only way to know for sure is to try them, is to download each one, uh, create a simple application, and see if you're happy with it. Because um, GUI applications take a long time to learn, especially if you try to get good at using them. There's actually quite a few other toolkits out there, um, especially for Python. So TK Enter itself doesn't come with a, a graphical user interface designer. Um, but PyGubu Designer is, a, is an excellent option. I use this application myself when I'm designing TK Enter applications, and I'm very happy with it. But before I started using PyGubu Designer, I always created my TK Enter applications via code. And knowing how it works through code uh, gives us a lot of advantages. One thing that PyGubu Designer does is it, it helps me better appreciate what it's doing um, compared to if I had to create an application's interface through code. So it saves me a lot of time because I know what's involved with writing a, an application through code versus using a designer like PyGubu Designer. Another advantage is if I find that PyGubu Designer isn't doing something that I expect, I can always revert back to code to do what I need it to do. You know, it might be something that PyGubu Designer doesn't support yet. I can, I can use code to, to make those adjustments. So if you do plan on using any kind of graphical user interface designer, my suggestion would be to learn how to do the same thing through code first. And then once you know that, then maybe start using a, a designer that will speed up the process. So there we are. Uh, we, had, we looked at Kiwi, we looked at GTK and TK Enter. All three of them are, are toolkits that are available for Python. Uh, I just happen to like TK Enter the most. Um, but by all means, 
try all three and see which one you like best. I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching.